It's recording. So thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Um, we have Sabrina um, in Germany. Uh, good morning, good tag. Good Abend. <laughs> good Abend. And Sabrina is a Zoom dance instructor and a longtime friend of mine who has been giving me um, valuable advice on my music career, both as a singer songwriter and recently she's been um, trying to advise me to get into a little bit of acting. So we're gonna see how that goes. And from Toronto, my very good best friend, Jamez, who is also my church buddy, uh, singer songwriter, traditional and modern African dancer. Um, I, I really wanna start out by thanking each and every one of you for um, attending this um, conference. And the purpose of this is for us to discuss I want to get your feedback on my upcoming EP, Aphrodisiac. Um, now, the music itself is from uh, Zanzibar in Tanzania, the island of Zanzibar, Tharab music. Uh, whereas my last album, Hope for the Meek, I needed to do that to sort of like give thanks to the Almighty, Jehovah, uh, Adonai, and Allah, uh, among many of his names. With this uh, record, I'm really giving a tribute to my grandfather, who is one of the founding fathers of Tarab music in Zanzibar. And it's also going to be one of my first recordings ever um, in Swahili. But the music itself is not um, going to be traditional Tarab music. It's going to be in the genre of uh, pop rock and reggaeton, um, to name some of the genres. Uh, so Sabrina, you were telling me how um, your German kids um, visited Zanzibar and uh, they found that Zanzibar uh, was somewhere they, they would want to uh, visit continuously in the future. Tell me a little bit about that experience and, and how, um, you know, kids born in Europe were experiencing Zanzibar. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, <clears throat> of course, I moved to Germany and uh, I married a man that has two, uh, two children already. So it was a beautiful experience when I took my stepchildren and my own child to Zanzibar. Right. And when we went there, they were surprised by the beaches, mm -hmm. the fruits, the nature, and everything that comes with it. And uh, that was not the only country we went on holidays with them, but we went to a few countries. We went to Canada, we went to the US, we went to Japan and Dubai. If you ask them, which was the country they would love to visit again and which was the country they enjoyed the most. They did not hesitate to say so and so. Okay, so my, my concern, Sabrina, to be quite honest with you, is that I am doing, uh, I'm taking traditional Zanzibari Tarab music and giving it a modern twist uh, in the genre of pop rock and reggaeton. And I know that some people are gonna resist that idea. Um, some people are gonna say that, you know, music doesn't sound African enough for, uh, or, or, you know, it sounds a little bit too rocky with the rock guitars and so forth. Do you think that, um, you, you know, as a person who speaks Swahili and a person who's visited Zanzibar quite a few times, do you think that that's something I should be concerned about when I'm, when I'm dealing with the uh, recording of Aphrodisiac? No, I don't think you should concern that at all. If, if I'm talking about my experience with Zanzibar music, if we're talking about the traditional side of Zanzibar music, we're talking about Tarab. And Tarab means the time of Ahwan Safa. That's where your grandfather exactly. was an official and well-known Ahwan Safa. And that was the time, when you talk about Tarab, you're talking about typical traditional Zanzibari music. That consists of not only the sound, but the words that come out. It was very poetic. The music was actually it was a transition of what's gonna come next. There's something I cannot describe. I'm not a big fan of Tarab, but the old Tarab is what I respect. The music, the, the text of the music, the lyrics were amazing. I mean, I'll tell you about one, one of my favorite songs and that's Kiyu, Kiyu means thirst. And Kiyu is a song where I think that was um, Seb Salim who sang that song and he's gonna talk about him who's one of the old singers in Zanzibar. And he's talking about a song. And if you really listen to the text and what the text is, it can relate to your own life and your own experience as well. And that's what the old music was about. I'm kind of disappointed with the transition. It's moved on to today's Tarab. I don't call it Tarab anymore because it's more about 
Rusha Rob, Ali's gonna also talk about Rusha Rob, it's become more aggressive and more spontaneous. It doesn't have that melodious and uh, peaceful way of expressing itself, but the world changed. And yeah, that's what's happening today. What so I, coming back to you after, sorry. Sorry, what I wanted to, to also point out is the fact that you live in Germany and as a, a person of Swahili descent who is in Europe, do you think that a lot of uh, Swahili people who are um, living in the diaspora, whether in Europe or in the UK, do you think that they are going to connect more to the kind of music that I'm trying to do because it fits well with the environment that they live in, but also gives them a connection to um, you know, the homeland, the island? Yes. Definitely, definitely. Okay. James, I agree uh, with that. And the reason is because we both, we both. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I, I was um, trying to get you into the conversation. And what I wanted to know is uh, when you are doing, because you do traditional African dance and, and then you, you've merged the traditional African dance to create a modern dance with modern beats and modern using modern music, whether it's reggaeton or, and that's the kind of sound that some of the songs on Aphrodisiac are going to have. Do you think, do you face the same challenges where you feel that you're not being authentic enough to the African traditional music when you're doing, when you're, when you're combining it to, uh, to the new sounds of, of uh, African beats? Mm, I wouldn't, no, I, I don't face that challenge because um, um, my view is just different, <laughs> basically. So it, you you have to be comfortable in your own skin. Like, you know, as long as you're enjoying what you're doing first and being genuine about it, I think that that's where it starts. Then the other thing, I mean, if you speak about traditional dance, well, it's based upon knowledge. And like the more you learn, um, the context in which things are, uh, are being made, you know, that's the important thing. And that that gives you an insight and also can allow you to create because like, you know, the people who created these dances are like you and I, <laughs> you, right. you know? So we, we tend to look at like, oh, well, this is traditional, but you know, everything that we see started in the mind. So the, the same thing like with these dances. So if I put intention, Sometimes like, you know, I'm telling a story with, you know, how I'm dancing and I didn't, I don't tell anybody that I'm putting that story there, right. but you'll let people come to you and say, while you were dancing, this is what I felt was happening. This is what I saw, like, you know, and they express different things and like, and a lot of times it's exactly what I wanted to um, portray. Like, you know, over the years, some people say like, you know, the message in your dancing is clearer now. Like, you know, I could actually see the story now, like, you know, compared to before. So, um, and all things, let it be organic, <laughs> you know, let, let it be organic. I, I'm concerned um, also the fact that the, you know, the music is essentially a mixture, original music is, is, an, is a mixture of Arabic and African sounds. The language is Swahili, but the sound, the tunes are really Arabic, thought of either inspired from Egypt or the Middle East. Now, if I take that music and, and put a pop rock kind of like feel to it and the singing can't really be uh, how it was sung originally, do you think that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the Africanism out of it and making it more, for example, uh, appealing to a, to a Western audience that, that don't necessarily, can't relate to, to you know, um, what it's like to live in an African environment. Do you, I'm, I'm concerned that maybe that will be some of the uh, reactions from the critics. Now, I, I, I really don't usually care about what critics say. I, I really care about my fans, but in this particular situation, um, because um, I'm, I'm delving into a cultural music and a music that's been, um, you know, giving homage to my grandfather, but the, at the same time in Zanzibar now, Tarab is still alive and well. You know, it's not like the a music that's um, that's dead, and then people have moved on to um, a, a modern version. You have the modern Afro and and uh, Afro Tarab, you know, that's danceable. But the traditional Tarab is still alive and well. And you've got new musicians coming up every day trying to keep that spirit alive. Uh, my concern is that if I if I go down this road, is it possible that I am going to be uh, looked upon as um, 
an innovator that's not appreciated? Do you think that I should be concerned about something like that? No, Sabrina? not at all. Not at all. I mean, people. At all. people I personally don't care. Because, as I said, life is evolving. And if you bring your soul and your passion into it, and you love it and you enjoy it, of course, at the end of the day, you have to make your fans happy according to their demand. But it starts within you first. What you believe in and what you think, yes, this is the right direction to go and you'll bring the crowd. But most important, that you love doing what you're doing at that moment. Yeah. What do you think, Jamis? This, this, at least this is my perception of it. Jamis, do you yeah. know yeah. you can you, you, you bring whatever in. Can I just point on one thing, which is yeah. amazingly crazy? Yeah. I'm just going to say this and I want to hear your reaction. But Jerusalem. Have you guys heard that? Uh, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I it's did you just ask? I heard that. The pity, Jerusalem. Oh, yeah, I heard that song. absolutely. Obviously, oh, the whole world heard about it. They played on German radio, German radio. But sure. that guy sang it from his heart. He had a concept, he wanted to bring it up. He did okay. Alfred beat that in at the moment, but he brought it out in some way. It doesn't matter. My feelings, like whatever you have it in you, you can glorify it, put it in such a way that you can just bring it out and right. people will adapt to it. But it's the energy you bring it out with, yeah. right? Zanzibar has evolved from Arab, Afrika, to Nur al to God knows different kind of bands. So point today is Rusharov, who will understand it when he gets to know more about Zanzibar. But it's evolved and people are ready to receive whatever is new and hype. Most important, what is important with Africans? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's important? But, but see, I, I'm here. worried about it's a lot here. of the listeners. And yeah. You can go, na, 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 na. And they'll go with it, right? Yeah. But if the na, na, na comes out good at the right time, who wouldn't go for that? See, J a lot Jamis, of my I'm listeners, sure. a lot of my listeners, na, na. a lot of my fans are actually um, global. So, um, I have to, I have uh, sort of like a, a double concern to please my global fans that are located in, in North America, that are located in Europe, right? And these are people that my, my latest single is a country song. So I gained new fans there. And now I'm taking them into the direction of Swahili music. I want to keep those fans. I want to retain them. I want to make them happy. But at the same time, I want to do justice to, to you know, uh, the uh, Zanzibaris or the uh, Swahili people that are living in the diaspora in Europe and also the people that are living in Zanzibar. I mean, after all, I, I wanna get radio um, airplay and uh, I've contacted a couple of radio stations in Zanzibar and I, I'm going in humbly. I'm not going in with the attitude that, you know, I'm Ali Hugo, I've had number one hits in, in Europe and in the UK and, and so you're gonna have to play my music. I'm going in there and I'm saying, hey guys, this is different. Can you please play my music because I want people in Zanzibar to hear this. You know, if you want my uh, that's, opinion, that's how I'm sorry to break you. If you want my personal opinion, if you're gonna take there, take yourself there and take your music there, just tell them here, I'm coming to wow you. Then I hope you accept me. Yeah. Bring yourself out and just say, hey, I'm coming to wow you. And period. That's it. Whether they're gonna be wow or not, that that is, uh, that's gonna happen gradually or. Whatever, but you, you, you're taking your passion out and you're bringing you who you want to. And personally, I think that's going to carry a lot of value, especially that you are going into a country to bring a country up according to their traditional music and just bring it for the new generation. And that is important. I love that. I love the fact. And I think that's going to bring a lot of value. I mean, come on. If you're going to, I mean, you told me about you playing this song, but you made it pop. I can't wait till I hear it. Oh yeah, I was in the studio and I was like, oh my God, this is so good. By the way, as a pop song, and I'm sure it, apart from people who might not in the, in the West who don't speak Swahili, you know, um, when they hear the music, I'm going to say this in Swahili, excuse me for a second, Jamez, they're going to be like, yeah. uh, you know, I can relate to this kind of music. Okay, I'm going to play that for you, Jamez. It's just like, it's like, oh my God, this is a wonderful song. It is like, no, it's not just a nice song, but it's tamu. Tamu means it's sweet. Yeah. You don't want to eat it's sugar sweet. and you feel that. That's what I'm saying. And, and it's and a magic I can't wait. I love song. You know, it's a, it's a song that you can actually go go on a walk 
um, on the beach, on the white sandy beaches of Zanzibar and play it on your iPod and say, you know, uh, or have your significant other and, you know, uh, hold hands uh, in the clear blue, um, you know, clear waters of the Zanzibar uh, Indian Ocean, right? But James, do you feel that way when you're doing um, your dance? Do you feel, sorry, I called you James, but it's actually James. James, do you feel that you need to stay authentic to the critics who might look like if you're performing for uh, you know, a, a government official from uh, Congo, from Central Africa, one of the countries there, do you feel that you would need, they would criticize you for not being too authentically African in, in, in the type of dance moves and the type of music you choose to dance to? Even when you're dancing um, an Afrofest in uh, downtown Toronto, do you feel that you need to uphold the traditional culture or you feel uh, it's easy for you to just make that, and put that modern twist into your dance? Um, well, in short, I'll have to say, like, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't do things for to please others. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> like, I, I am who I am. Like, so you, you either accept me or you reject me. That's yeah. it. <laughs> That's, so I'm not, there's been times where, like, you know, um, I've been hired for to do some gigs, and then I have I have an artistic direction that I want to take that they didn't like, you know. And then they've told me they didn't like it. Oh, we wanted you to dress up with like you know your costumes. Like I don't wear costumes. Like, <laughs> I don't wear Sorry, costumes. I just want costumes. Yeah, right. Like yeah. no, like when you and then too is just like I mean they're hiring you, they're paying you fifty dollars, and they want you to put on this big production to, I'm just like that's insane you know yeah. that that's I'm that's that's insane so but you know even going out doing these things it's just but you still connect with people that love what you do regardless of what the organizers may think or, or whatever but I the the key the key is to be true to yourself <laughs> to be true to yourself and people will be true to you I I think that that's where that is so I love, you know, I, I, I was born in Congo. I grew up in Canada, but I know how to do the traditional dance. It was not taught to me. I didn't learn it by watching videos or whatever. It's in my blood. So it's there. You know, my parents, my aunt, uncle, like, you know, when they see me dance, you know, they're just, they're saying I dance like somebody who was born in Kasai, who lived in the village, like, you know, and they're, they're mm -hmm. amazed by that. So then when I, I've seen the video and I'm like, you know, I'm amazed that I don't know how I'm able to do that, but I, I just I just comprehend the dance in the way that I'm able to create in it. So, and then moving on from there, you know, when you're learning the traditional dance from Ivory Coast, from Guinea, from, you know, from, from, from Ghana and from South Africa, like, you know, and then like, you know, you see, you see the connection. So to me, it doesn't really become, um, there's no separation because it's just like we're all connected. When I see these dances or I hear the languages, like I know I'm connected to, to, to it. So, you know, Africa is music. <laughs> That's so where it starts from. On, and when you're performing on, on um, an Afrofest, you know, in Toronto, uh, do you feel like you are also, do, do, uh, for new Canadians that are coming into Canada and they've, you know, either they've, they're fleeing persecution or they're immigrating to Canada uh, from Africa. Do you feel that when you do your dance, you're communicating with them and giving them a feeling of, uh, you know, uh, settling in into Canada, but at the same time, you know, uh, reconnecting them with their roots so they, they don't feel estranged when they're at Afrofest because you're giving them something that makes them, reminds them at home, but at the same time uh, makes them feel at home in Canada. Does that, does that, um... yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, for, for quote unquote new immigrants that come here, I mean, they'll be always surprised. It's like you've been in Canada for so long and you dance like this, and or you know, this, like, and it's just very, it's celebrated, you know, it's really celebrated because, like, it reminds, it reminds them, like, of home, and then they're also. They're, they're happy to see this here because maybe they didn't expect that, yeah. you know, there's someone here. Like, I'm one of the few, like, really, that, you know, dances Montage from where I'm from. <laughs> you know, there's there's not a lot of people.
that do it in the way that I'm that I'm that I'm doing it. So um, my community, I mean, they're like your own community sometimes don't really support you, but I mean, but when they see when they see you do it, they are happy. They, they are happy, you know, that you know that you're, you're you're doing it. And then with that, I mean, I've lived in Canada, so I have to take in, I take into account the music I grew up in. So in my when it translates into my songwriting and stuff like that, that's where you see the diversity of like music. Because like, and I think you you have to pay homage to the people who have inspired you. That's it. And like you know, chosen music. So there's certain music where like you know you'll hear some elements of like Shade, you'll hear some elements of Prince in it, you'll hear some Madonna in it. Like because it's just like these are music that have touched you and like. You don't just listen to that music just for listening's sake. Like you know, you're you're, you're infused with it. But so you know, when it's, you're infused it's crazy with it, because in, in, point I'll, I'll mention it after for we a done. long time we did not have a, a a black radio station. So um, that that you know, I I think that that kind of when you have a radio station um, like Flow um, that only plays black music, it's sort of. Uh, the, the, the um, urban listeners, well, they don't use the term urban anymore, but um, people who prefer to listen to black music sort of miss out on uh, having a combination of music that they could actually listen to. Uh, and then if you're only listening to um, country music or um, you know uh, pop music, then you miss out on a lot of the um, hip hop and R&B. I was very lucky growing up in Toronto to have been exposed to both of that, but now I'm doing country music and I don't feel that uh, it's, I'm, I'm a foreign person doing country music. I feel that I have roots, you know, because I grew up not too far away from Thunder Bay and then Thunder Bay produces someone like Shania Twain, who, you know, rocks the country world. Anyway, when, when she came out, that was the big thing. So, um, and then Sabrina has grown up um, in Dubai where uh, there was no segregation of uh, different genres of music. So um, we used, by the way, Sabrina is a huge fan of Alice Cooper. <laughs> Come on, Sabrina, yes. give, us, give us a little bit of that. <laughs> so when you grow up, you know, and you don't have music segregated, um, you, you come, you, you know, you can draw on uh, various inspirations. And I think that uh, what you said right now, the type of music that you were talking about, uh, Jamez, uh, certainly um, a lot of kids that are growing up now don't have the the, uh, the exposure to the variety of eclectic music, you know, they're either listening to hip hop on hip hop radio station, or they're listening to R and B to R and B uh, radio stations, or they're listening to country. And, and music has been so segregated. You know, uh, we are lucky that we're living in a time where we have playlists. And if you look at my playlist, you've got music from all over the world. But some people have a playlist of just a particular genre, and it's you know, it's it's um, it's it's sad to have been uh, have grown up in an era where you know music wasn't so segregated. And so I totally, I fully agree with you, uh, Jamez, when you say that um, you have elements of Sade, you have elements of um, Madonna, or in my case, Cindy Lauper, or in, in, in Sabrina's case, Alice Cooper. Yeah. Because music I mean, really doesn't have is, any color. Just... Go Ooh. ahead, Sabrina, sorry. I mean, if I mention one thing, if we're talking about music, I mean, especially that uh, Jamez is from Congo, and uh, of course, I'm originally, my sisters are also from Congo and um, they sounds before us where we kind of adapted. I didn't grow up there, uh, but uh, you grow up with it. You don't have to grow up somewhere to feel the, uh, you know, the tradition and what it comes with it. But um, have you guys noticed, start with the tarab, all right? We're going to start with tarab and then we're going to move to Zaire music. With tarab, how does that, we're talking about bashraf. Yeah, you're gonna have one that's not gonna last four, three minutes, it's gonna last at least seven minimum because we're gonna start with Bashraf. Yeah, where people just sit there and sway to the music and enjoy that you know, the viol and every instrument that goes with it. The point where the singer starts singing, and when the singer starts singing, the, the singer is gonna take you to a different transition music as well. But Bashraf and Tara was like that, it takes it from enjoy the music from. Every music instrument, and, and, and you have people like Sidney who really put an, uh, a global right, perspective exactly. on Zanzibari music. Yeah, and then, and let's go to Congolese music. We're 
ميوزك وين صوت التن 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 If you don't want me, I'm okay. You know how the music changes from oh, yeah. one position to the other? You study. So, and then also, kwasa, 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 kwasa. I, I, I love that. I love the fact that you're going to cry in the beginning, but at the end, you're going to be happy. And that's how I see our music. Being, that's how it started. But today is different. And this is how we just have to learn to evolve. And Ali, I love the fact that you're going to start with. Tarot comes to change them to rock where the young generation can also enjoy where we're at from. Well, it's going to be pop rock, but I, I, I um, you know, uh, the, the, the idea and how I want to market it uh, is, is, like I said, it's for my fans who are probably non Swahili speaking fans, but, um, and Swahili people are living in the diaspora, and there's a huge diaspora of Swahili speaking people, whether they're Swahili from Tanzania and Kenya or Swahili who are from other parts of Africa like. Uh, Rwanda, Burundi, and Zaire, and even Congo. Uh, so uh, for the people who are living in the diaspora. And uh, so when I was doing my research, I was looking at people like Peter Gabriel, who um, you know was for a very long time supporting African music uh, with his real world record label. Uh, and, and looking at how, how am I going to market this kind of music? I mean, I know that I'm, I'm knocking on every uh, radio station in Tanzania, in Dar es Salaam, I'm knocking in uh, Nairobi, and I'm knocking radio stations in, in, um, in Zanzibar to play these songs. But it's going to be a challenge for me to even get, you know, the songs played on uh, pop radio stations in Europe and in the United States that are not catering to world music, right? I mean, I, I felt I, I, faced that, I faced that same challenge when I was doing Christian music and I was doing uh, Islamic Qasida and I was doing Jewish hymns, a lot of radio stations told me, I'm sorry, but we don't play Christian music. I'm, I'm like, well, this is pop. It doesn't matter that it's Christian pop. And they were like, well, you know, we don't play any kind of religious music. But I was able to, to convince them to, once they heard the songs, they're like, okay, maybe we'll, we'll play one song. I'm hoping I can do the same thing with this, this kind of uh, with aphrodisiac, the songs there, where they're not just secluded to a, a special program of a radio station that deals with world music but you know they're played on on you know chart topping uh, programs right so that's, okay that's so you're basically to, so so you're basically trying to attract a certain crowd or yeah. are, you, are you trying to um get everyone into it or you're just aiming for one crowd the new generation old generation or you just want to be everywhere that's the question no no with this because particular one it'd be everywhere everyone is, Ever, everyone, Jamis. What would you suggest, Jamis? If you're an attractive, huh? what would What's you suggest? Well, Jamis, not Jamis. <laughs> in African way, sorry. Well, the question is, um, should I be focusing on a particular uh, crowd of listeners who uh, either Swahili-speaking listeners, or should I uh, go into a niche market and I'm, I'm catching one listener at a time? You know, uh, like catching fish oh, one at a time. Listen to this, listen to this, and building a long-term oh, uh, fan base based on that. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. Oh, a net to get every kind of fish with it. Exactly, a net to get yeah. every kind of fish. I agree with the net. Some you would go with the net? Because <laughs> then, yeah, catch some people in, you know, Korea, Japan, like, you know. Yeah. So they'll, they'll, they will like that music. It's just like they, 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 they listen to a lot of stuff. So like you, you would have people there, I'm sure. And what Asian about market. what about live performances? What I, how I'm I'm planning on doing? Obviously, with with COVID still haunting the music business, it's going to be a lot of uh, you know um, virtual concerts. So, would you suggest no, that I go ahead and do a whole performance concert with a with band, or do I just do you know a, a one each song like with a unique instrument, like play the accordion with one song, play the xylophone with another song? You know, do it that way. How would you prefer to see that uh, the performance of these songs? Would you prefer to see them as a complete band where I have a band behind me and I'm rocking to to out of music, or uh, doing more of an MTV acoustic unplugged kind of approach to it? Well, I think if you could like do it with a band and like, I think I would just do like a pre-recorded set with a band 
as if it was a show and then you know and you can market that stuff and like you know i mean you could uh, get people to buy your concert basically yeah and then the other element is just you know music videos again just do the music videos for the songs or whatever and then you you have a live show that uh, people you could you could sell to network or whatever or you know have people buy tickets like you know <laughs> if the car yeah that's that's what's happening right now Fifty bucks for that they did and i was like wow because they really you know they were like in their church but they transformed the whole thing to make it very um modern like they had change of lights change of clothing with the song like it's the same songs they've been singing but they've rearranged so when people pay fifty dollars a ticket to be able to have access to the concert and like i was like wow and those ladies are in their 60s like 70s and they're still doing that and like they had all and to me when i watched it i was just like wow it was worth 50 dollars honestly yeah. i felt like wow. Wow, that's wow. another interesting point that uh, that you uh, raised there, James uh, Jamez, because with with hope for the meek, when I was doing that album, I wasn't really counting on making money. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be dishonest. I did make money from that album, but a lot of the music was given out for free streaming, and I wanted people to have access to that music without actually uh, having to pay for it. Uh, so with this recording, though, um, I, I'm you know, I need to cover studio costs and, you know, uh, so what do you think that uh, um, it would be unreasonable for me after having given so much music out for free on the last album uh, to demand premium prices for this music? Because I really think that for some people, for music to have value, they, 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 they pay for it, then they value it even more. So do you think uh, instead of the usual 99 cents a download to go for maybe the the dollar 99 or two dollar uh, per single download, do you think that I would be um, uh, cheating my fans or uh, being disloyal to to the cause of promoting thought of music and and uh, you know no. as a whole? I, I don't think so. I mean, look at the times we're in. Things are different. Things are being done differently. So. And, um, you know, I mean, we do need the support for all this work that you're putting in. So, um, you know, I, I don't think I don't think it's um, <laughs> it's you being disloyal. Like at a certain point, um, I think people do get what artists are going through because of what's been going on. So. Um, there, I feel that there is there is a support. Like you know, a lot of artists now are doing lives and they're asking for, or like you know, they're asking for donations, like you know, whatever you can get. So a lot of people are doing that. So you could do that in that format too. Maybe not demand like a set price. You could do a live and do a show and then ask for donations. Like you know, that you could take that route too. So yeah, there's no wrong or right. Every ideas are good. Um, you know, at the, at this point, so one ninety nine two dollars. I wanted to discuss with you guys about, and that is a record label. Uh, um, as you both know, I'm signed with United Masters, and um, by far, I'm really happy that I did sign with them because I can see that my career has taken uh, 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 notches up from where I was when I was, you know, doing uh, with Mirage Records, um, which was a boutique Canadian label. Uh, with uh, United Masters, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing uh, a big change and a growth in my career. With this particular recording, I thought that maybe I could go with an African label that would distribute my, um, you know, uh, music from within Africa. But I don't think that I really need to do that because I think that um, United Masters um, has the clout to, to, um, to you know, uh, promote and, and, and get my music out there wide and far. But when I look at the artists that are out there right now in, in Africa, you've got, um, you know, all these different musicians. Um, I, I don't want to name names, <laughs> but um, people that are um, really out there, you know, and, and are making a, quite a bit of money from doing music. Um, 
where do I fit in in, in, in that whole marketing genre? Do I need to fit in? What do you think, Sabrina? I mean, okay, we're gonna go back to what we all discussed today. I mean, the whole idea of discussing or having this meeting is to come to a point where we are aware, we know, we share ideas and everything. I mean, first of all, I like what Jamis said. He said, you need to find you to bring it into your music. And that's where it starts, I think. I mean, uh, I know you're trying to go back to your roots. And that's what we, this talk is about aphrodisiac. It's like you're trying to go back to Zanzibar. Um, I personally believe, I don't know, Jamis has already also pointed that out. I personally believe what you, what, what do you want to do? What are you trying to achieve? That's the first thing. And if you want to achieve that, you want to find the best values that are going to come into it. Okay, right. you want to start with our music, like pop, we're going to make it. Okay, how is it in the crowd? What crowd do I want to attract? It does not matter. It starts with you. Well, what, how do you want to bring you? the argument. There's, there's always the argument, and Jane uh, Jamez made this uh, very clear. He said that some people come um, and they see him dance, and they say they can't believe that he can dance that way because he grew up in Canada. Uh, I mean, I'm, all, I'm, I'm going to face the same kind of uh, uh, dilemma that's it, that's where people it. are going to say, well, yeah. "You've been living in but Canada. He, you don't know anything yeah. about Zanzibar. You visited it just for a few months last year, and and all of a sudden you think that you can come and." You know, be a representative of Zanzibari culture oh. to to the diaspora. No, you know, the thing um, about you know maybe your my Swahili is not is not up to par. <laughs> maybe they're like, why do you pronounce words that way? They don't sound uh, Swahili enough, you know. And that was when I was in the studio the other day. I was trying to 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 not sound. I, I didn't want to sing songs like uh, I didn't want to come out and say something like Akina Mama Sophia. Mambie Sophia Wangu. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to sing it like. Is that how you speak Swahili? Ali, when you speak with me in Swahili, do you speak like Sabrina Hujambo or Habarizako? You don't speak to me. Like no, but you can't hear it. You speak to me in Swahili. You can't hear it because I, you, I might come across to you that I speak normal because you speak the way I But to, to an average person in Zanzibar, they might pick it up and say, you know what? They, you know, it's You're not bringing authentic. Who you are, and do not lose that. Do not lose bringing yourself because if you lose yourself, you lose track of where you want to go, Ali. Absolutely. I want well, you to love where you I are. Can't, I can't put on an act. The fact of the matter is, I'm Zanzibari, right? Um, I, I, my ancestry is there. And um, if I read a Swahili uh, paper today, I cannot understand a crap that's in there. Right, and but that and, does not uh, make me you know, I, 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 It does I not have, make me allow me to embrace my culture. You know, and and so having a combination of Zanzibar, Canadian, uh, melange. <laughs> uh, no, all of that. Focus that's on Zanzibar. Gonna, I guess that's what's yeah, going to make the thank music. You. Thank you for yeah, thank you for mentioning that. You know, we are from different parts, the way we grew up, I think, right? Absolutely, we grew up yeah. in Dubai, Oman, or whatever. But, but what I want you to in Dubai, focus in Oman, yes. You are working on a project, block everything else, and try to focus more on Zanzibar. And other things that come within is something you cannot control. They come automatically. And right. that is beautiful. Because, because you, you, you're, you're, trying to write, you're trying to sing music, you're trying to be authentic, but your idea of authenticity is uh, eating at the Hyatt. <laughs> In, in Stone Town, but that's that's really not. <laughs> I don't know how, how people are going to relate to that. Are they going to see it as being authentic, or are they going to be like you know these? You're singing these songs, but you really you're not coming through because. Um, so, you go out there showing who Ali is, artistic ways of bringing things, or do you want to go there just as a person that you're not, just to please the crowd because that's going to wear you out, Ali. Yeah, but it's going to wear you out. I certainly do. You need to, uh, uh, you need to, to become like a holiday album. So it's not the kind of album that you listen to that's associated with, you know, uh, a holiday souvenir. You know, I want this right. record to be number one in the charts, just like a lot of people told me, well, you're never gonna have a Christian song, a number one, and, the, uh, and, and uh, Marching Saints was number one, you know, and they're like, well, you're not Christian. Why would you wanna do, uh, you know, why don't you just go ahead and do a Hebrew album? But I, I you know, I want I want it to be mainstream. I don't want it to be sidelined into a record that you go and buy when you're on holiday or you know that sort of thing. I think we lost Jermez there. Oh, back again. Who's back? Uh, my, my battery. <laughs> my battery is so low. So, um, 
authenticity is is about uh, being myself, I guess. That's what I'm getting from this and not really worrying about uh, whether I sound like I'm from, um, um, uh, you know, downtown Dar es Salaam or whether I sound like I'm from Stonetown. It's, it's I love the, uh, yeah, my personal opinion, don't please the people that come up because you're going to act like them. No, they need to know Ali first. Ali can be diverse. Ali can be from everywhere. You're international. Because the yeah. way we were brought up, Ali, you know where we came from. Yeah, we were brought absolutely. up in a country where we had no choice but to accept every nationality, every tradition, every whatnot. We had no choice. That's how we grew up, whether we liked it or not. And that sure. adds um, an asset to the way we can bring ourselves out. But the only way that we can move forward is starting by being yourself. If you're yourself, that's going to give you the strength because you're going to face the world. If you face the world, Ali, it's not an yeah. easy thing because everyone's going to attack in a different way. And if you have your base and who you are, that's going to give you the, I don't care what you say. I don't care what you think. I am here. And what I want to do is something beautiful. I want to carry songs about sure. art. And if everyone has a problem with that, I'm And sorry. I want to create a work of art. But this is me. I don't me. want to compete but with anybody that's out there that's making a lot of money. And we all know, you know, there are a few artists that are really popular. That's not me. I want to, I want to yeah. do a creative work of art that's going to last, that's going to be appreciated. Absolutely. And hopefully, you know, with your help, with the support that I'm getting from my team, yeah, my you know, darling, uh, two was missing today, unfortunately, but uh, all of you guys are, are really, um, you've, you've supported me throughout with the last record and with this one, I'm hoping that um, all the feedback that you're giving me right now is really going to go into creating a, a record that I can be proud of. Oh, you. Um, and, you know. Um, and, you're and, amazing, uh, darling. I don't know what I'm to say. You guys are amazing. No, Ali, you, 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 no, you are amazing, mashallah. I mean, I'm serious. You've got so much talent. And so much potential in you. And, and I'm proud of you. I mean, I don't know. Jamis probably has to. Add some things to what we said. Yeah, I mean, stop uh, overthinking. Stop, stop overthinking. overthinking. Yes, well, please. Well, let, and thank James, you. We we spent a lot of time going to church together. When you were, um, when I was doing Hope for the Meek, and I was releasing a lot of that Christian music, a lot of the the spiritual music. How did what? How was that reflect? How did I reflect myself on you? I mean, how, what were you thinking? Did you think that I was on a on a different journey? Did I sound authentic? Did did any of the um, times that we spent at church together was did you feel that in any of the music? Did I reflect that? Well, yes, but that that question is something you. Um, you need to, to 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 answer like i mean i mean <laughs> if you were not authentic per se like why would i hang out with you <laughs> in a sense, what would be the reason <laughs> like yeah uh, you know why are we still in contact today <laughs> like absolutely i don't know you tell me <laughs> you know so um, you, like, I, I'll, I'll say to anyone, it's just like, you have to be happy with you first. Yeah, sure. Because that's where it starts. That's, that's where it starts. Like, if you press play and that song touches you, then you've done your job. Yeah. You've done your job. Like, you know, and, and then, so yes, when I'm in the people studio, criticize it's really whatever. Really and like, yes, <laughs> like, people can help you improve or whatever, but at the end of the day, when I press play and I love that song and it touches me and I'm happy with it and stuff like that, you know, that that's, I've done what I need to do. You know, you're not gonna please everyone. You're not here to please everyone. Yeah. You're here to be who you are. <laughs> that's what well, you are here you for. Know, so I, I, if I, you I, have I, the yeah. ideas, if you have the ideas, you go on, you do it. And then like you, you try to perfect yourself and stuff too sometimes. When I listened to myself two years ago, I was like, oh my God, that was horrible. <laughs> like so, some things were like, okay. I listened yeah, to some of the tracks that. I've done in the like, past and I'm so, like, oh my God, did I really well, do that? I <laughs> so it's, you're growing life, you're living, you're growing. Like, you know, there, there, there are so many things we should have been taught that and we weren't taught that and as you grow and mature yeah. you walk towards like you know the light and you 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 become informed and then you have to apply these 
these things so that like at least you know when i get my shot at being a parent then there are definitely some things that <laughs> i'm gonna teach my children like like they should that they should have a base so that they are even more mature when they reach to my point or or even earlier so that they that. can know themselves you know absolutely so but but what so about all of this is people, a when i did when i did time machine you know uh i did that ep for people who, who you tell me, you know, I, I'd say, well, you know, what are you listening to? And they're like, well, you know what? I don't listen to the radio anymore. I don't understand the music that's out there anymore. I just, I, you know, they, they, I say, well, what do you listen to when you're driving in the car? They're like, I turn on podcast or some, some uh, spoken word or talk show just because I, I can't handle the music. So I did Time Machine and the music that would take people to the sound of back in the day. Do you, uh, Sabrina and Jamez, do you... Uh, come uh, experience that same kind of feeling that you know you don't really want to connect with what's out there on the radio anymore you're just happy being nostalgic and listening to the music that you already know or do you still go out there and say you know um uh, I'm, I'm going out there and i'm going to listen to the latest pink record or uh, you know ariana grande and uh, uh i mean no the po the popular music right now is not very impressive but then you still have some people that are like you know that produce gems so um and then there's a lot of independent artists that are out there that are doing wonderful music i have friends here who are artists who are doing wonderful music um so i mean there's a lot to choose from like it's you know things things are changing like whatever how it was before cannot be what it's going to be because because of you know the division and all of that it's just like you know even in my project like you know people tend to discourage me like oh well so what genre are you going to do like i'm like i'm not into that i'm creating music as it comes to me you know yeah. and if it happens yeah. to be a country song that's what it is but i'm going i'm not going to be you know molded into a box because i have to like if you know me, that's not oh, me. That's, you're that's never been. Just the crowd, basically. <laughs> yeah. No, like, you know, so, so to me, it's not that I don't have the I don't care attitude. It's not that. It's that I'm going to be me without any apology. You know, I'm going to shine. Sure. I am like tired of trying to dim my light for this one or that one. And like, you know, and like, no, no, I, I, I need to be fully who I am. There's a time where you need to okay. be that and do that sorry musically in every way. Sorry, what I'm was sorry to cut you off. I'll ask you a question. When you say that you want to be you and you're going to stay you, you are going to stay you. That's within you. There's nothing that's going to change that whether you like it or not. But of course, you're evolving as well, right? So you get to a point where you're going to say, this is me, but hey, I want to add a bit of new out of here and out of there to still stick to me. Hmm. So you're going to somehow evolve without you realizing that because you're going to move on. But that does not mean you lose you because you're going to have that base. You're going to have your base. You're going to have your ground. But with your ground, you're going to grab a bit of things that are going to groove you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Isn't Sabrina, that what it is today? I, I, I need we to clarify are... something there. And that is uh, when you're selecting yes, music to do your Zumba classes, do you feel under pressure yes. to select the latest uh, track that's you know popular uh, on the radio? Or do you feel that uh, you know yes. you can you can do select the music that you already know and people are just gonna you know react to that? Do you feel that you constantly need to be on the know so your your Zumba classes can be viewed as being I'm, modern and up to date? Really, I'm really Thank you very much. I'm really glad you asked me that because I am not a type of person who was always updated with the new music. Right. I mean, okay, I've got- uh, What happened? You used Leather to be the kind of person old, and she you were telling me the latest hit. You would tell me that, you know, this is the latest you know? song, but how did, how did you stop listening to the radio? <laughs> oh, guess what? That's what, darling, that changed. That changed. It changed to a point, okay, because as a Zuma instructor, you're already given music. And most of the music, of course, is more of Latino. And Latino means they bring all the latest. So whatever I bring in, everyone's like, yay, we already know this. But it's not something that I personally know. I'm going to get to know it as I learn the choreo. And not only that, I, in my class, I always try to get people's feedback. I am myself 
I bring out what I like to enjoy my class as much as because my enjoyment, my positive energy brings out to the rest and make sure that I also take their feedback and bring it back into me. And when they bring it back into me, that's when I hear what kind of songs they like to hear. It's like, hey, I do not promise that I will make chorus for all the songs that you mentioned, but bring something out that you really like and I will try. And that's when I hear what the crowd, because I have different ages in my class. You have the younger people who are bringing new music to me. It's like, oh, have you heard this song? I'm like, no, I haven't, but now I am. You know, okay. and then you have an older person who's going to bring in all the song. Let's but do. But I can find a remix that's still going to be. So, so you do have let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to throw out some names, and I'd like you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind, both of you. Okay. So, Sabrina. Oh. Cardi B. Oh, Kerr. No, I can't think of <laughs> name. No, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cardi B. Can you go anything with Cardi B? Come on. Any song, anything from Cardi B? Um, oh, so you're you're I'm you're, you're about it. I'm asking my James Maroon Five. I, I who <laughs> <laughs> they are rude if they put number five on them. I. I, I, I couldn't even tell. I couldn't tell, I couldn't tell oh, you. That's that's oh, terrible. Sorry, that's you, you know, you, that's you've terrible. lost you me there. Terrible. I've heard of them, but I cannot tell you. <laughs> what did they say? Bar, you know, that? listen to like subscribe to like questions. I don't know some music service. Serious, you know. Amazing. Keep on going. Keep on asking us these questions. This is amazing. Oh, my room five. We failed. Cardi B. We failed. What else? Uh, Gwen With Stefani. Cardi B, uh, I, I honestly, really, I only liked the song she did with Bruno Mars, really. You know, that's the, that's the, that's that's how I, 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 I heard like that, that, um, that uh, old school, old school R&B type with uh, Bruno no. Mars. What did Cardi B sing with Bruno Mars? What song is that? I don't remember the title, but that's, that's how I heard of her. Like, I, I know, like Bruno her Mars because song she's more than just a, a, a musician. She's a, a personality. She's really what 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 we would call back in the day. You'd call a, a star. She has star quality. You know, she can uh, she can be. You can see her in a play. You can see her in, in a movie. You can see her uh, doing. Um, you know, she's very yeah. diverse. She is you know, one character. Talent, that can, she's she 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 has glorified ghetto. Yeah. Well, oh, I don't think they're that's all cool. called ghetto has been glorified a long time ago by various people, eh? No, but she's put a, a different twist to it. Can I be excused? I want to get something to drink. I'll be back. Absolutely. Sure. Go right ahead. Go on, but can you all, hear you? All it is is just like they're all copies of Little Kim, really. From back in the day, and yeah. From, they're all copies of like her, really. And then it's just, there's like, there's nothing to me. There's nothing, there's nothing new to him. It's just like, I mean, I don't. I personally, I don't see, I don't see the talent. <laughs> I don't see it. I see, like, I mean, you you create this persona and then you you go to it, but there's nothing, there's nothing uh, concrete behind with acting like that. I mean, those reality shows are just like I've watched some of them, and it's like it's horrible. It's absolutely well, I, horrible. I see talent there. Petty. I see talent with her because, uh, you know, I, I think sometimes a lot of people don't understand that that's her reality. That's the her. We talked about being authentic and she is being authentic. You know, that's her. It, we're talking about glorifying the ghetto. But if you're from the ghetto or if you, um, uh, you know, your reality is based on the type of music, then, then she is being authentic. But I think she's talented because not only uh, in terms of the music, but she's her. Her personality is is um, you know compared to a lot of artists that are out there right now, um, she's 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 more than just a booty shaker, you know. I'd like to put it that way. Um, she's I, a booty. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. She's more than just a booty shaker. She, <laughs> she's, you don't see that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a fan. I am. If you ask me personally about Cardi B, I I respect her. I don't judge her, but I'm not a fan. No. So who are you? I, 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 I'm still into class. I'm, 
that way. I'm old fashioned that way. I'm, I'm not out there for me to prove a point, but I cannot just sit there and just, you know, like, occur. Oh, I, I, I can. So and, who and are you, Anna? Like, who are you, this, this is This is what the industry is pushing and putting money into. And like, you know, it's just like, I'm sorry. If I have I, a daughter, like, I'm not like, no, like, no, you can't. Cardi B is not going to be your role model. I I'm have, so sorry. I have a daughter. But hang on, guys, yes, guys. I, I think we're getting, we're getting, we're being hypocritical here because you guys just said that you're not there to judge anybody, and you said that you should be authentic. She is being authentic. Oh, 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 that's okay. reality. That's All that's right. authenticity. Here's my story. Here's my story about that. I'm not authentic. You be who you are, but don't expect me to follow you. Because I have my own principles. Oh no, and I that's would why. admire you don't like your work. I would admire your work. Turn away, turn it but off, and so forth. Defend. But you can't but deny that it's I, art. I, it's I, art. You know, and it's concrete art. It might not be the kind of but art that you no. appreciate, but it's, it's art. art. I love that art. But, so, but, like, but, but, but again, but again, you should, sorry, you should, you should something. hold that. Like, I mean, this is this is your opinion. That's entirely your opinion but that's yeah. not an opinion you could like push on me you know to yeah. recognize this yeah. as yeah. art yeah. like yeah. i don't see it that way that's that's just that like i mean i'm not she's doing what she needs to do you know what i'm saying right. but, like, do, do i see it as art personally no i don't and there's nothing wrong with that you know it's not putting her down or up or whatever yeah. i just it's don't i don't really you know i'm not it's just like when you go to the groceries if she's on the shelf, I'm not gonna buy her. I'm gonna go to the next one. That's it. That's all the here. people behind me are gonna I go, buy. Uh, exactly. Thank you, Jemis. I don't care how famous she is. I don't care how much money she makes. But if I go somewhere and I look at her, the way she sings, the way she acts, and on the other side, I have Alicia Keys. Where would I go, Ali? You know me. Who would I go to? Can it be Alicia Keys? Well, no. Let's, let's, my let's, take it, let's take it. Let, let's look at it from this perspective young, for a very long time. For a very long time, Beyonce was viewed as someone who was doing a lot of body shaking, right? And then she came out with this new record that's a masterful piece of art that's, you know, uh, it's, it's sort of, uh, it's African inspired. It's, and, and this is the Beyonce that I always knew um, she had it in her to come out with something like that. And I was, I, I was expecting it and I was waiting, anticipating it, and she finally did it. Super so, costume outfits that inspires girls to look naked on stages. I don't like that personally. I don't like any artist that will go up there and just expose sexual parts of them that makes other kids also think. I mean, I have an 11 year old girl. If she's a fan, Beyonce's fan, and she wants to walk out as Beyonce, I won't allow it. So she's not a role model for my child. So I do not have. I don't want to get sued by anybody. And I don't. An artist, <laughs> so let's 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 um, let's but move on. Name, from, but, but one thing that I do want to say, so I, I I personally feel under pressure to if I don't keep up with the latest music, with the latest fads, with the latest trends, I feel like um, I'm not going to be relevant in today's music but you industry. Have to, you have to. I have to keep up with new dances because I'm a dancer. I love dancing, so I try to keep up with new dances. And you have to do what you have to do. Yeah, There's absolutely. nothing wrong with that. But do you, Just do you not theory, feel... you also try to... So, so, so who are you listening to right now musically? Who do you listen to? Sabrina? You're asking me, Yeah, me. I'm asking you. I listen to everything. Every, um, I listen to everything that's thrown at me. Everything from Jim Derulo to uh, what you call it, these singers, I don't even know their names, but I know their songs. But because of my daughter, she brings new things to me. And I, I don't think I would have been aware of them if it wasn't for them and if it wasn't for Zuba, because Zuba also throw new things, new music into our choreos right. where I don't have a choice. How about you, but Jane? But personally, I won't lie to you. Jamez, uh, who are you listening to? Right now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really listening to, because I'm, I'm creating right now. So it's minimal, it depends. I mean, there's a new artist, um, here in Montreal, her name is uh, Jelly Tapa. She's from Mali, and she had an album. She she won the best um, world uh, Juno last year for her album, and right. and I I stumbled upon her. So I've, I've been listening to her like great great music, great music. But here and there, but like because I'm I'm working on my project as well, and. So like let's, I, let's I then because I have to uh, talk about whatever. So 
Do you feel as a, uh, now, because we're both Canadian artists, do you feel that you uh, continuously have to represent Canada in your art uh, to get uh, recognized either with uh, Juno or, um, you know, SOCAN awards, or do you continuously feel like you need to uh, represent Canada in your art? Okay, well, when you're not no. representing Canada, no. you feel like you're being, uh, you're not, you know, you're not being um, patriotic. Do you feel like you're not being patriotic when you're not representing Canada? No, no, I, I'm, I'm on earth. <laughs> I live in this world. So like, that's what matters to me. Like all, all the other things are like, you know, it's secondary, like, you know, so I, I don't put a lot of um, emphasis on these things. I, I really don't because you know, I'm living one day at a time right now since, you know, ever since my father passed away, it's been one day at a time. That's what it's been for the last three or so years. And like, so a lot of things have changed in terms of like, you know, how you view things, what you like, you know, I always when I was little, I was like, you know, I want to win a Grammy, but that doesn't mean anything to me now. Like, you know, it doesn't American Music Award or Juno, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't have the same weight it had when I was younger, you know, because I, I think, you know, you, you're the winner. You've already won. If you could breathe and do what you could do, you have the award. Like, you know, you have, and then if people are touched by what you do, like, you know, uh, you're able to have a meeting with the two of us, like, you know, that's an award. Like that, that is something I know. that contributes. I... Like, so my view of like things is just like, you know, people want to say, well, this is a, a Grammy um, uh, award winner or whatever. But like you have the Grammy because we all showed up, <laughs> you know, we showed up. We But like, that's why you have it. You by yourself without anyone wouldn't have it. Yes. That's you also have to look at it that way, you know, because all the other musicians, all the people, all of us sit globally. We show up. That's why you have these awards, not because you're better than anyone. You know, there's people that I haven't been heard that are just like, you wonder, like, why aren't you? Sometimes you, you meet people like, you should be number one right now. But like, they don't they don't care about, they're just happy. How many people have I met in the US like they're, they're just happy being in the choir, getting their $500 a week. And then they, they could sing, <laughs> they'll sing Beyonce out of the park on any given day. Like, But that's not what they care of. They're just happy to, share their gift and like you know and that's it and that's it you know so so um that that's that's how if i'm doing something well i'm i live in canada so i i, I don't have to make an emphasis like you know i quote unquote, i am quote unquote canadian and it has contributed to you know who i am so i don't that's never going to be taken away from you or you know but i just my view is just very different <laughs> very different of hmm. you know i you have to value, the value is you, you place it on yourself. Like you're the one who plays the value on yourself. And then instead of saying, oh, people are not treating me or they're not paying, you have to set those things for you instead of like, you know, I think about it differently about like, oh, they don't call me, I'm not in the clique. Like, you know, that's why they don't like, you know, I could have said that about Afrofest many times, like say like they don't support their local artists and like they'll get artists from whatever pay them all the money and to us it's just like sometimes you just give us the scraps or but I don't even care like I haven't performed in Afrofest for a while and like what have ended up happening I would just go to Afrofest to just go to the drum circle that's where you would find me that's where I'm going to be that that's why I'm chilling do you, you feel know? that your content in Zumba has to reflect Germany do you feel like you, you're under pressure to to be uh patriotic to to um Germany I mean, I think uh, I'll also reflect on what uh, John has said. Um, at the end of the day is um, you're there to be an existence, yeah? An existence meaning, if I go to my class, I'm gonna start with, is this Christmas? I'm not a Christian, I'm a Muslim, but it's Christmas. What am I gonna do? Of course, I'm gonna bring Christmas music to enjoy the festivities. There is at least a quarter of being patriotic to start with. Yeah, because it's celebrated everywhere in the country. So I'm gonna start there and then I'm gonna move on to say, okay, my God, I'm in Bavaria. Bavarians are proud to be Bavarians. So I am also gonna integrate that into my own passion and bring it out so that we, we relate. They know I'm African, they know they're Bavarian. 
I appreciate them. They appreciate me. So if you're somewhere where you're happy, you can't help but be patriotic and you'll bring it out in every way that you can, where you think that it is possible yeah. or it is, it is the right moment. So yes, I do that to answer your question. I do that. And I do that because I'm proud to do that. Not because I'm forced not to. under pressure to do that. No way, no. Are you, no. Do you feel like I, I have Never. to continue? I remember I was being interviewed one day and uh, you know, someone said, uh, okay, they're asking me a question and uh, I knew that the interviewer was bilingual. So um, they asked me and we spoke in English and then I said, can we, can we do it again in French? <laughs> and he said, well, why do you want to do that? And I said, well, in Canada, it's, it, it's, it's best if you do everything, you know, and they said, well, no. <laughs> so I, I, I reflected on that and I said, well, why did I want to do everything that way? And I felt that maybe I was, I was you know, I, I wanted, I, did, I, did, I was afraid that, you know, I'd be viewed as being too Anglophone and then, uh, or being too Francophone, balance it out and-, and I do understand, uh, I understand that. I mean, uh, I think all of us have been in a situation where we've made a decision and then later on, we always reflect back and say, you know what, it could have been a bit different, whatever. It's already happened. We're not going to crap a spilt milk. But the only thing is what I've learned as I move on, is the more I bring me out, the more people will appreciate it. But I cannot just bring me out as Sabrina, period. No, Sabrina's gonna come up with fireworks, right? Fireworks meaning, what can I give you as a person to make you happy? That's my mission. You're gonna go home being happy and you're gonna to remember to come back to my class because that's how I'm gonna earn money. Yeah, because so it's, it's gonna to have to be a win-win Bringing situation. that back to- You're gonna come yeah. here. If you don't like, that's it. That's what I like about the name of the group. It's, it's, it, the beautiful thing is that I'm going to come here and I'm going to go, who's going to move to it? If everyone's going to go, what's that? No, you sorry. I'll be back. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that's really I, interesting. I, 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 um, you know how this is how I start my class. Times, I just, no music. Sorry. Sorry. So, in terms so there's of no music. I come, it was quiet. And I just go, and I wait. So everyone's looking at me, wondering what's going on. Shoot again. And I wait. And it was like, what's going on? And I just say one thing. Can you do it with me? So I go, one, two, three, let's go. And we go. They stop the music. Once everyone, there you go. Once everyone gets that, that's when the music comes on. And we got a rhythm to start. No one makes a mistake. No one thinks that it looks stupid. Nothing. Because we started clapping together. It brought us together. So it doesn't matter. And I tell them, it doesn't matter what you do. Bring you out. The reason, the out reason I asked you, love and passion. the reason I asked you about, uh, yeah. you know, being patriotic, because aphrodisiac is also supposed to be for the Swahili diaspora that is in, in the UK, Swahili diaspora that is in France and Belgium and in, in Germany and Italy. Do you, you know, sometimes people say, I don't want to listen to that music because I'm here living in Europe and that music reminds me from back home and I'm really trying hard to integrate into this society. I don't want to have anything that's going to connect me back there, not at this point in my life when I'm trying so hard to be a German, when I'm trying so hard to be an Italian, when I'm trying so hard to be, you know, a, 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 a British citizen, then this music is just going to take me back and make me feel like a newcomer constantly. Wherever. Right, I mean, that that's, you're talking about occasions as well. I mean, if I'm here and I listen to German songs is when we go, let's say, when people go skiing and they stop to appreciate, you can stop somewhere and that's the only music they play. They are music they play. And we're talking about life is life and all this, they call it Schlager music. Schlager music is what everyone listens to when they go skiing and they drink their schnapps. It's part of their tradition culture. You think I'll just sit there and go, hmm, I wanna hear Afrobeats, no. I'll be louder than them. I'll enjoy the ambience, the feeling, the, the culture and everything. I hold it up here because if you don't do that, then you're missing out. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be part of it. I'm gonna to go to China, I've never been there yet, but if I go to China and I eat, I drink their rice wine and then I enjoy their food and then after they go ching chong chong and that's their song. Oh, I'm gonna ching chong chong and dance with them to enjoy the ambience, to be part of them, you know? Wouldn't oh. you? You would too, right? It's all would, about absolutely. being someone but, and appreciating but, them. But do you feel that maybe you're not under pressure 
uh, uh, being in Germany for a while now, and uh, you're not under pressure to to uh, to prove your uh, German patriotism. So that's why you can accommodate listening to the new music that I'm about to do. But if you're a new person, a new German citizen, or what we call new Canadians that have just arrived, maybe the idea of listening to thought up music, right, is, is gonna make you too nostalgic. You're gonna think too much about back home and you say, I don't wanna listen to that music because it's reminding me of back home. I'm trying to be a new Canadian. I'm trying to integrate myself into the society. And this music, which is why I thought, you know, if it's a pop rock uh, thought of song, that'll sort of like, you know, um, uh, for okay, people who are fans, you, ask Mark, you, know, you can say, you know, okay, this is something I can. Darling, darling, let me tell you something. If it's a song I can relate to, first it starts with a language. You can put whatever you want. You can make it funky. I can dance or whatever, but it comes from the language that you're going to use. If you're going to sing a song, and add pop, you know, pop, funk, whatever you want to add to it, I can relate to it because of why. This is me as a Tanzanian and being patriotic now. I hear my language, which is something I don't hear very often today, unless I go and tune to. I don't always have time. I've got to be vast with music. I've got to go everywhere. But if I hear you, first, a person that I know and I love, two, so you're singing but, a song. But that what I is your hear. language? Your language is English, essentially, isn't it? English because, because you I speak grew more English than I, you do Wahili. I know that's true. Right? That's true. But I, I, I would say I, that I you speak, speak that you speak um seventy-five percent of your everyday life, you speak English, and then twenty-five percent is Wahili. I would say the same with you, James. You would I you would speak either English or French daily more than um, any of the African languages. So what exactly where, is your 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 where are you going with this? <laughs> no, what I what I'm trying no, to say good is what, what I'm really trying to say is, is that it's easier for us to say that, you know, this is great music, I'm going to listen to this, and it's not going to affect, because we're not newcomers, but if you're in a living in a, if you're a person who's just moved from Congo to Canada, if you're a person who just moved from Zanzibar to the UK, and someone is bringing you Thara music, and you're really struggling to integrate yourself into society, this is an issue that, that's really important because we're living in, in, in the immigrant, uh, migrant world right now. People are just leaving their homes and immigrating to all these different uh, countries. You know, these people are trying to integrate themselves into the, the societies. New Canadians are trying to integrate themselves to the, are they going to take time out to listen to music that's going to make them feel nostalgic to their homeland? And if not, that's where I come in with a pop rock version of it. <laughs> do you see where I'm, I'm, I'm heading towards with, with, or do you yeah. think I'm completely out of touch with, with, with that um, analysis of, of uh, an immigrant's uh, experience who's living in, in the diaspora? James? My question James? is like, what, what, like, I'm just trying to figure out how you came about to like stress so much on this uh, on this point, like. Okay, guys, I I can hear you. I'm just moving you somewhere else. I don't want the video to affect. Go on. Sorry. Yeah, like I mean, what? Because it's just like I mean, if I reflect, I mean, when we parents from back home were always like into music of all types, all kinds, and stuff like that. So. And I mean, with us coming here, I mean, that continued. And then like, you know, and then you, you get introduced like to new stuff and there's stuff that they, you know, began to, 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 to like, you know, and that didn't influence uh, what they already liked from back home. So I, and then too, it's just like, it almost sounds as if, you know, like, yeah, people migrate to other places, but to 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 make it sound like, you know, like it's a struggle and they wouldn't I don't I don't know. I don't know about that narrative. If like we we can assume that because people are different and like it depends on the situation, but like uh that's that's to me, the emphasis would be like, you know, to, to, again, I'll go back to you being happy 
Well, where, you talked about you uh, you know, people, people in Africa would listen to music and every kind of music, but you have to understand that a lot of people from that generation are not facing a lot of the uh, challenges that uh, people in, 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 like I said, the Swahili uh, diaspora in Zanzibar, in, in, in the UK or in Belgium, they're facing a lot of challenges that, uh, you know, um, they have to be in control of their emotions and maybe sometimes Nostalgia can be a good thing because it reminds you of back home, but at other times you don't want to be nostalgic because it takes you away from the reality you're living in right now. And you say, I don't want to hear those songs because I want to focus on, you know, um, uh, do you think I'm, 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 I'm not- You would have to know, you would have to know these people for you to truly like, you know, make this uh, assessment right now. Right. And I don't think that, and I don't think that, they that should affect uh, what you're trying to do with your song. Just do your song. Just do my song. Yeah, do the, do the song, put it out. Don't overanalyze. Well, it's always the marketing you know, me. I Whenever I do music, you. there's always the marketing at the background. I'm, how am I going to make this a success? And then I need to do all these marketing uh, matrixes and analyze, you know, you're saying you're doing music for the diaspora, Swahili diaspora in Europe, you have to analyze their feelings, their challenges. Can I ask, and can maybe I, you're right, yeah. maybe can you I should overanalyze and just put it out there. Yeah. And partly maybe if, if, failure. Can I say of, something? Can you guys hear me? No? Okay, yes. We can't. Go right ahead. <laughs> no, it's just, if I could just quickly, just very shortly, I, I think if you, um, there is a way you can segregate the two. Okay. And the only way, my personal opinion, I mean, it, it varies from one person to the other, but my personal opinion is you can segregate the two. You start with your passion and what you want to do for yourself as you. From there, once you achieve that, then you can just be diverse. You can just go according to how it will please every crowd, but start with you first yeah start with me so what, I'm sorry, if, that's all i had to say carry on. Sorry, it's, it, it's really the, the 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 old saying if i make music that makes me happy it's going to be successful and make everybody else happy and i think i've achieved that with aphrodisiac i mean the first track uh blew me i blew myself away i was like oh my god this is i i, I enjoy listening to this so um hopefully the fans are gonna start. love it that's and beautiful you know that's um, where it starts. If you're blown away with it, you're gonna. And, um, I won't have to shelve it and and you know <laughs> have it in the my where are they now project. But that, but that yeah, beautiful. Yeah, if if you're happy with it, your your joy and your passion in it is what's gonna bring people in. It's like, hey, you know what? I'm not gonna enjoy this on my own. And you will find a lot of people. You cannot expect everyone to come with you because everyone's got their own taste and everything. I might like a song you might not like. Sure. Or Jamis might like a song that, he, you know. But at the end of the day, if you start with you, you can make anyone, even a deaf person, feel your beat and like you. It's how you portray yourself. But yeah. you should bring you out. Start with you. And if you do that, Ali, and you said, this is me. Okay, right. You know what? Today, this is how it is. You're going to go to Alabama. You want to do country out of that? It's like, here, this is this is the original song. But for you, Alabama, put your hat on and do whatever tricks you want and to do. But that's what I did, you. actually. I know. That, but it's My new country to single is doing really well in the States, and I'm really happy about that. But um, you know, I, I think maybe I really want this project to work. And as, like like James said, I'm overanalyzing. I'm, I'm building... Um, marketing monsters, <laughs> you know, saying, oh, how am I going to reach that person? I, I, how am I going to reach the newcomer? How am I going to reach, you know, uh, the, the native Zanzibari that's not in Stone Town? How am I going to reach the radio stations in Dar es Salaam? How am I going to get it played in Mombasa and, and Nairobi? And uh, what about the African dancer? How is he going to react to this? Am I going to be authentic enough? Is my Swahili going to be good enough when I'm, you know, doing interviews and, okay. and all of that? Because I think I speak excellent Swahili, oh, exactly. but then some no, other people no, no, might no, say, you that is, that is, is that? the least of your worries. Yeah. How you're going to have handle the interview because the interview is going to just be you. But it, it, that's the least of your worries. I, I just wish and hope that 
you enjoy the journey as it goes. It's going to be frustrating, yeah, of course. I'm you're going to go right out now. there. I love it. I love the music that I'm but creating the studio. Enjoy it's the just... journey as yourself. Me personally, after doing Zumba here for a while and just doing it in a little town, it wears me out because everyone knows me. One thing I do not want to be in my life famous. Yeah. I do not well, want that. Too, it's too late for me. You know? me. <laughs> it's not me. I, I can't make that. I can't make that. You know, it's, it's, it's happened already. Thank God. I, it's what I've always wanted. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up. But I'm not an artist. I'm not an artist. I don't have the talent that you have to there, share with you know? the world. I just have dance. What are you going to share? Everyone can dance. I know, I know. That's why I cannot compare myself to you. You have a lot it's to not, show. It's not, I it's, don't. The pressure I just, is, is, is about... Do my thing is the pressure is not about being famous anymore. The pressure is not about being mm -hmm. famous. The pressure is about staying famous and being relevant because as quickly as you were a big name yesterday, today nobody cares about you. Nobody knows you anymore, you know? So I can I, can, I have to be continuously keeping up, uh, maintaining and gaining new uh, fans because... Marching Saints was number one last year. A lot of people don't remember it anymore this year, and they moved on to newer artists. You know, so know, it's, right? it's it's crazy. Huh? It's re it's retaining your fan base. That's a challenge. You know, it's it's not like back in the yeah, day where you've made it famous and you'll be famous for the rest of your life, and you you'll have fans for the rest of your life, and they'll be there to support you. You know, I'm competing with Netflix. I'm competing with video games. I'm competing. My content is competing with other TikTokers, you know? I'm competing That's with other- That's choice, right? You know, it's just not being on the charts and on the radio. I'm competing all around and trying to remain relevant, you know? I look that at my stats. Cool. Yesterday, I had 3,000 followers on, on, on Instagram. And today, I have 1,500. The other 1,500 just decided to unfollow me for God knows why. Uh, don't work yourself out of that. Fame mm. and being famous and, and trying to- uh, to maintain yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, relevancy in the music market today is just, it's right. extraordinary. The, you know, I know, like I said, I'm true. competing with things that, uh, and, and entertainment that has nothing to do with just music. Right. You know, it's not like going, I'm going on stage and singing live and trying to sell tickets. Right. I'm competing with, uh, like I said, uh, 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 video gamers. Mm -hmm. I'm competing with content creators. Right. You know, and, and you've got incredible people that are creating incredible contents and uh, the pressure yeah. is on. And I think, I think this is what's important. I know Jonas wanted to say something. Uh, what were you going to say? It just sounds so all stressful. <laughs> like, <laughs> stressful. Yeah, I, I think, I, no, no, I, I know why it sounds so stressful. I think the thing is that uh, I realized, uh, Jamis, excuse me, but this has to, it has to do with our upbringing and the way we were brought up. We were brought up not to believe what we wanted to be. I personally wanted to be a professional dancer but if I mentioned that to my dad at that time I wouldn't dare mention that to my dad that I would want to be a professional dancer it's like what a waste of my money I'm paying for a school that's supposed to give you good education and what By you want way, to do shake your Sabrina booty. is a product oh, of Catholic but they don't school. see it we went to Catholic school so you know, all the rosary I went, yeah, I was the, she knows them <laughs> she's, she's from Catholic, Catholic school yeah Mm -hmm. yep yeah yeah and then not not only that but i grew up not being able to express where my passion is and ali too we both grew up that but at least ali got a break somewhere where he managed to do that but even that living in the community where he was living there was so much mocking and uh uh you know haters and everything that's possible that you always have to feel like you have to fight your way through to prove what your where your passion is Unfortunately, so I understand where Ali is coming from. He's coming from somewhere where you're like, yeah, and, but there's not like, hey, you can move further. Hey, you can do better. Hey, you can do, you can, you can. Mm -hmm. But that's the, that's the culture. That's our culture. And that's uh, how we were brought up. I, I, I remember a song and lyric does, to mind. And this is something that I wish, yeah. And if this goes viral, I hope that the new generation realized that it does not matter what your dream is. Don't wait for your parents to make your dreams prosper or, or fulfill them. Right. Oh, There's a song lyric that comes to mind and it says, making it, don't make it anymore. There's no such thing as making it. You know, how, how, how do I go and compete right? with a person who, who makes content based on PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, 
and and Xbox. I mean, come on, how many? Yeah, but Ali, yeah, and Ali, don't, make it don't in, doesn't make it. Doesn't make it. People sold their skulls. I'm, I'm doing a Zoom yeah, call. No, no, no. How many people saw this? It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm. I, it's not only a conference to to get feedback about the new project, but it's also a way for me to relieve anxiety on um, what if the project does not succeed. You know, um, I know I might not feel like a failure, but I, I want it to succeed so much that um, you know. Maybe building monsters and creating marketing matrices are, are part of that, um, you know, part of the anxiety <laughs> I'm creating for myself. And meanwhile, James, you look like you're, you're totally relaxed with, you know, your career and how you're creating music and, and, and you know, no pressure there. You know, you're doing it the way you want to do it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I guess fame has a price and you have to pay for that price. You know? That's true. I mean if that's what you want, but like, I'm not going for fame. I'm going to, first of all, like, you know, like I said, I'm enjoying my songs right now. They're not out there. I haven't been able to release anything yet. And then yet, okay, people are waiting, you know, to hear because it's just like, okay, we know he's a dancer. Like, you know, now they sort of know that I have a little bit of a voice. They want to hear what I'm up to, but uh, the Does process, it frustrate you? It's, it's Does it been, frustrate you? No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Okay. Because every, everything has its time. So I'm enjoying the process because I'm not, I'm not where I used to be in 2006 when I started performing again. You know, like I'm not where, where I used to be back in 2012. Like when I thought, like you know, I'm gonna launch this and this is the year that everything's coming out and. Uh, it did not go that way at all, like, you know, and, but looking back, I'm happy I didn't because I wouldn't have matured, like, you know, to me, my voice sounds better than 2012. And really, I don't think I would have been, I would have been able, would have been able to, to sustain. Why, uh, back why back. does this not, why do you think that you sound better today than earlier? Because my voice has grown. Like, I mean, if I can, <laughs> I never thought that I could, like, sometimes, like, I could hear, you know, Gerald Levert or Eddie Levert in my voice. And I've never heard that before. You know, some of the, like, the way that it's sustained, the way that I can hit some notes now that I'm like, I'm like, oh, my voice can go there. Like, I, you, you know, it's just this. Right. Been... Can you, is it okay if I ask you to let us hear the difference? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. The difference I'll right now? Right. Is that possible? Give Only if you a, want to. Yeah, it's, it's, no, a, don't be pressured by it. So, like, I'm sorry, I'm being Dave Chappelle right now, smoking in my conference, <laughs> but anyway, go on. Hold on. It's now you realize that the pain you've experienced made you stronger than yesterday, and you're here to tell your story of how you made it through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that, whatever. All right. Oh. Oh, bravo. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Rock on. How would you, okay, now how would you think that earlier? Can you do that? I don't think I can. Because <laughs> like, you, you lost it like, along the way? You lost it along the way? I, nice. I mean, I would have to make you listen to older recordings, like stuff like, I mean, I, and two, I used to hate my voice, really. I used to love it when you sang at church. Every time you were there, I was on the front row and I would listen you, to you, you, like, you know, do the wow. gospel. And I was like, you know really? what? This is what it's all about. This is praising Jehovah. And, I know. Uh, and now, now, I hate beautiful, it. Beautiful, amazing. Don't you dare do that. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, now, going back to Ali, Ali, you say you made a pop out of a tarp song. 
How does it sound today? Can, is that possible? Would you do that, please? Go well, on. I'm not going to sing the songs that I, uh, because that's just going to uh, kill the surprise, but to give you an idea. Whatever you can. Right. Uh, this is a song that um, is really popular and it's a Swahili song, but when you sing it, um, uh, you know, in, in a sort of like pop rock kind of style, it'll be something like, I cannot touch Sophia. Mwambiye Sophia wangu. Na ye atake vile. Na milele. Na milele. Wasemaji waliosema. Waliosema. Moja oyote. Haikuwa sawa kweli. Na milele. Na milele. Mama ye. Baba ye. Oh, I love that song. I love that song. Can I get an idea of maybe you, singing it to Felipe? Wow, of, Sophia's lucky you know, that you sing that song. Asante Sana, you know, all the folks in Zanzibar, Tanzania, Shar Salaam, Nairobi, Mombasa, Kinshasa, merci beaucoup. <laughs> okay, okay. Are we going to be dramatic now? Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, that, that's oh. all you need. I mean, if you, the, uh, you, you can't, there's things that you can't fake, but like, I'm, I'm like, as to me, as long as like you do your song and you're enjoying what you're doing, like, you know, like you just did and we can feel passion and whatever. Red, That's what you matter. And the, thank you. And the song that he sang right now, not only the young, but the new generation can also relate to it. But we sing it with passion, and that's what's going to attract people. It's what you bring the old in you, but it's how you put yes, it yourself absolutely. in it, right, Shannon? Absolutely. So, um, well, let's hope it works, and guys, because um, you know your 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 feedback has really um, put me on a, a much stronger position now to do the album. Well, it's not an album; it's an EP. But to, to do the recordings and, and you know try to market them so that they actually, um, for me, I judge success on how uh, my music outperforms the previous recording. So Time Machine outperformed anything that I ever recorded. And then Hope for the Meek has just surpassed Time Machine. And considering that a lot of radio stations won't play Christian music, a lot of radio stations won't play Islamic casitas or Jewish um, the fact that it was able to do that was just, uh, I, I, I view as innovativeness in, in the marketing strategies that I, can, I took. Can I mention, can one, I mention I something? Can I design a different marketing strategy, hoping that you know, right. it'll also perform, outperform can, can, um, Hope for the Meek. So it's, it's really okay. challenging myself and outperforming myself more than outperforming uh, the big kahunas that can are there in the African Ali? music industry right now. Yeah, if, if I, I want to mention something, though, I, I, mean, I know you're trying to reach out every way and everywhere. You're like a spider right now, right? Yeah. Uh, I would say start somewhere and then move on from there because now you're trying to reach out in everywhere. You, you put religion into it. You put culture into it. You put everything into it. And that's an umbrella that would not hold. No, no. I, I, when I, I talk my about religion, I'm talking wrong, about Hope for the Meek, that, that album and that project. And that's a wrap now. That's that's yeah. done. That project is done. It's yeah. something I needed to do, and it's gone. Time Machine was all about going back to the '80s to the '90s, and you know, recording that type of music. That's done, right? So now okay. this is a whole new different project. I have to come up with a whole new different marketing strategy that differs from marketing religious music, that differs from marketing uh, retro music. You know, uh, okay. this is, um, but also that's innovative enough that doesn't that it doesn't fall into the category of world music or you know, holiday music that you listen to when you're um, vacationing in Zanzibar, like a holiday souvenir CD kind of thing. Uh, I want it to be mainstream and, and you know, on mainstream radio and say, we're gonna take a chance to play this song, although it's in a, because if you, if you look at the music industry right now, okay, in the United States, you have American kids that are listening to K-pop that is not in English. They have no clue what those artists are singing because it's all in Korean, but yet these guys are number one on the US billboard charts. So we're seeing a phenomenon that's very, very unique right now. You know, this, this used to happen in third world countries where a lot of people would hear English music. They love the music, 
but they don't understand what these guys are saying because they, you know, they don't have the, the, the language behind the language skills. It used to happen in third world countries. So the reverse is happening right now where you have American kids that are uh, buying K-pop, topping the uh, uh, bill, uh, uh, Billboard 100 charts, and they don't understand what these guys are singing about. They just love the song, they love the music, and it sounds good. So uh, when I say that I want aphrodisiac to be mainstream, that's what I mean. I mean, I want it to be on mainstream radio as opposed to having it on, you know, a special program, uh, Zanzibar Today on the BBC or, or World Music, you know, on, on, on various, um, or Afrofest in Canada, you know, uh, in Toronto. Right. I want okay. it to be mainstream. Like K-pop is mainstream. And, and uh, you know, not necessarily the people who listen to the music, I, I, I don't want it to be people who only speak Swahili, but people who like the music and the way it sounds, even though they don't understand what I'm singing about. Because really that's remember, what's happening in the world remember, today. Ali, Ali, it's happening in Vietnam, Ali, Ali, remember, it's happening in, in, in darling, France. Darling, darling, <laughs> remember when we talked about Miki Dude? Yes. Mikidude, yes. what, yeah. we say, what did we say about her? If you listen to her music, it's not my taste. If, if I personally am honest about it, it's not my taste. But she has a way of capturing people the way she sings. She she traveled everywhere, Japan, Germany, and everywhere. And she's a woman. This is a very old woman in Zanzibar. May her soul rest in peace. But she lived to 100 plus, yeah? She would walk around in Zanzibar without shoes on. But she was actually invited to different countries to go and sing. And I'm serious. Ali, am I allowed to sing the way she does? Do you want me to do that right now? If you love to. Go ahead. Shoot. I want to go hear it. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sure James would love to hear it. Now, this is, this is the woman that was invited to Germany, Japan, and everywhere. And I'm serious, yeah? You can listen to her songs if you want to, to compare. I'm sure she'll sound better than me, but... Uh, beru, beru, lina marumba, na rumba. I'm like, okay. Kiyi di, yeah. I'm serious. That's how she's... Ali? You really know how to sing I mean, like... seriously. Beru, beru. But she actually sang in a way, and then she would play these drums. I mean, she was magical in her own way. I personally thought, I'm like, okay, I won't listen to her songs. But when I met her personally, and I saw who she was, I was like, seeing her live. And that's why she was taken to different parts of the world for people to see her live. It was her presence that made a difference. It was lots of things. Guys, I'm going to have to say goodbye to you because my time is well, over. I, I thank everybody um, but, for, for taking their time out to give me the feedback that you did. Um, it's uh, Quite frankly, it's really going to help me uh, work on this project. I feel much more confident right now. James, James, you've really been a support. Stop about, going, John, uh, calling for me. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a, a strong support platform and, you know, the feedback you gave me is um, really uh, going to help me in the long run. Sabrina, you've, um, okay. you've given me uh, the direction that I need to take and um, I'm not going to do a lot of over analysis. What I'm going to do is put the music out there and see if, you know, it's going to receive the kind of uh, reception, um, you know, that um, I'm hoping for. And, uh, you know, uh, as, People in Zanzibar would say, Asante Sana Sabrina, who, who participate yeah, at the karibu, karibu, conference. Yeah, Asante, and as wait, wait. Uh, the people Asante, in wait, wait. Um, and... Kinshasa would say, Merci beaucoup, James, for tout. Kinshasa, they would say, Matondo. Matondo. Matondo, for sure. <laughs> or in Chuba, Kwasa Kujile. Okay, in Chuba, Kwasa Kujile. Yeah. That was great. I was able to catch that. So, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so okay, much. So, I, um... One thing I just, before I go, before I go, Ali, Ali, there's one thing I want to tell you. I wish you all the best. Yes. I can see you prospering. I can see you going way out. You're putting a lot of effort, a lot of work onto this. And Thank I'm you. proud of you. And I believe you're going to go far. And I, I'm glad that I'll be part of it as well. Thank you. All the best. Uh, don't forget my, me when, you, you, when you get that out there, when you get your private jet, don't forget me, okay? To I'll my you. fans, to my <laughs> fans that are um, all over the world, um, Sabrina, what do you want to say to them? Oh, you better love Ali because he's going to bring a lot of surprise and a lot of joy in your lives. You better brace yourselves and put that seatbelt on because you're going to jump so high. James. Gonna make you feel happy. What do you want to say to the fans, to the Ali Hugo fans? 
the fan, get on the Ali Hugo boat, and go for the ride. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, to to our viewers, whoever's going to view this, I'd like to say check out Sabrina's YouTube page and her Zumba classes are on YouTube. Um, you know, check check out her moves. Uh, she's always been an inspiration to me when it comes to dance. Check out Jamez on Facebook. Um, he has a lot of his posts there. Um, some of the classes, some of the poetry that he does, and also uh, some. Acapella. Oh, I'm going to hook up on you, Jamez. I'm yeah. on you. Jamez is there. I, I, I believe that you're also on IGTV. Jamez, are you? I'm on IGTV. Fumu Jamez. Fumu Jamez, um, yeah. Facebook. So uh, check him out. On um, Instagram. The kind of yeah. Incredible talent and um, creativity that he puts out. Sabrina, I, you know, I, I, I'm amazed at um, the, the energy that you put on your Zumba classes. And what I really enjoy is when you're really working out with your daughter, because there's a mother and daughter camaraderie there. And that really comes across. Um, really well. So thank you, everybody, and hopefully we thank will um, uh, uh, unite again after the project has uh, come to an end uh, and wrap out um, Afro. Looking forward to it. Okay. Asante yep. sana. Okay. All right. Love you. We guys. wish you all the best. Yes. Love you. All the best. Love you. All right. Merci much James. love, Ali. Love you so much. Yeah, much love, baby. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye, yeah. Sabrina. Bye. Bye, James. James. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bye. <laughs>